Today is the 25th Sunday of the year. Our Gospel text is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. This chapter of Mark's Gospel is pivotal in the Gospel. It begins with the Transfiguration. At the Transfiguration we hear the words of God at the baptism of Jesus with a special phrase added. In the baptism, we heard the words, this is my son, the beloved. Here, this is my son, the beloved, listen to him. It brings home a central reality and a central point of tension throughout the gospel, particularly this part of Mark's gospel. Jesus is trying to teach the disciples, trying to get the message across that he is the Son of Man and the nature of love that is being worked out in him and through him. Listen to him. Pay attention to him. All the evidence suggests that the disciples don't get it. They've been told at least once Son of Man will be handed over, will be killed, will rise again. It's repeated in today's Gospel. And there's a particular moment in which Jesus sits down. He takes up the position of the formal teacher. He sits down amongst the disciples and he tries to teach them, tries to get the message across. I suggest to you that There is a human experience that can help us to understand not only what the disciples are going through, the journey they are on, but what you and I, what the typical person goes through in becoming a Christ person, a disciple of Jesus. The experience is the experience of falling in love, a common human experience. And I turn to the eminent psychiatrist, Rollo May, to reflect on that experience. And I would like you to think as you hear what Rollo May is saying, something of your journey, your journey into Christ, your journey of baptism, becoming a disciple. I suggest to you falling in love is a good metaphor for becoming a disciple. Rollo May says, when we fall in love, the world shakes and changes, and there's a glow about life. It's delightful. That's the first phase, as it were. But it's not the end of it. Falling in love is beginning a journey. And it's important to realise that the initial phase which I think is evident in the disciple, is not the end of it, but the beginning of it. To deny that there's more is to run the risk of truncating one's life. So Rollo May writes, our Western culture seems to be engaged in a desperate, albeit romantic, conspiracy to enforce the illusion that this glow, this initial phase, is all that there is to love. It wants to hang on to that. It's a human thing to hang on to it. Not let the moment pass. Don't let the honeymoon finish. To the extent that we have, in Western culture, succumbed to that illusion, we've denied an essential element of falling in love and being in love. Rollo May continues, this element we deny is the consciousness of death. Not death at the end, not the termination of one's life, but the actual dying that is part of loving. Life and death are at play in love, both of them. Death is always in the shadow of the delight of love. 
That's a bit of a scandal, really. We want to deny it, but it's the truth. Falling in love changes just about everything. If we are capable of embracing the interplay of life and death in love, then our lives will be transformed by that experience. We will recognize that we are on a lifelong journey of transformation in that experience. We're not in control. We have fallen into this experience. And it's going to take us maybe where we'd rather not go. But it will be life. It will be the depths of love. Rollo May continues, what a different light this throws on the human problem in love. Then does all the glib talk about the art of loving, about love as the answer to all our needs, love as instant self-actualization, love as contentment, or love as a mail order technique. No wonder we try to reduce it to purely physiological sex. Or try to avoid the whole dilemma by playing it cool, by using sex to drug, vaccinate ourselves against the anxiety creating effects of true love. When falling in love plunges us into this paradox of life through death, it opens the door to a paradoxical life. Everything about life is seen to be paradoxical. The light emerging in the darkness, triumph through failure, knowing through not knowing. This is the way it is. We might rather it were otherwise because we could control it then. But falling in love is not taking control. Surrender. Surrender to something that may even threaten us. But it is the very heart, not only of loving, but of living. In today's Gospel, Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37, Jesus continues to teach, continues to lead them in the path of love. They've begun the journey. They have fallen in love, as it were, but they're at that early phase. There's a glow. There's great joy, surprise. What's going to happen next? But Jesus says, if you want to be a follower of mine, if you want to really enter in the path of love, you must take up your cross. Follow me. And he's announced to them twice, the second time today, that the Son of Man will be handed over. He'll be killed. And he will rise again, life through death, the path of love, infinite love, ultimate love. In our ordinary human experience, this experience of falling in love can open up in a counterintuitive way the beauties and the depths and the richness of our baptismal life, our life in Christ. Have you ever thought of your being a disciple of Jesus, your being a Christian is about falling in love unendingly? 